Welcome and thank you for tuning into the Queensland Brain Institute's Parkinson's Breakfast at Home Edition. A QBI update is delivered differently. My name is Professor Pankit Sau, and I'm the director of the Queensland Brain Institute here at the University of Queensland and research leader in the Asia Pacific Center for Neuromodulation. This is the center which is a collaboration between the QBI and St. Andrew's Hospital, where we're using different techniques to treat a range of conditions. The COVID-9 situation has prevented us from having our regular Parkinson's breakfast, but we did not want to miss the opportunity to keep you informed about progress that is making in the fight against Parkinson's disease. As many of you know, Parkinson's disease is a degenerative disorder that affects people that control their body movements. It currently affects about 100,000 people in Australia, and there's 38 new individuals being diagnosed daily. About 20% of the sufferers are under 50 years old, and many of them are under 40. Now, Parkinson's disease has been treated using many, many drugs, which are reasonably effective over many years. But the problem with these drugs is that many of the patients uh, require increasing doses of these drugs, and many of them have side effects, which are not great. As a result of this, there's a procedure called deep brain stimulation, which has been developed over many years and which is being used to by stimulating electrodes in people's brains. And this is used to reduce the drug intake and have quite good effects on Parkinson's disease. Our group here has been treating people for over 20 years and over a thousand patients have been treated at St. Andrew. Now, this group is a very large group of people in which there's scientists, there's clinicians, including psychiatrists, neurologists, and <clears throat> as well as neurosurgeons who work together to produce best outcomes for patients in Queensland and also throughout Australia. Today, I'm joined by Professor Peter Silvern, who's a neurologist who works at St. Andrews, and Dr. Francois Windels, who's a research scientist within the Asia Pacific Neuromodulation here at QBI. And now, hand over to Dr. Francois Windels. <laughs> I'm Dr. François Windels. I'm a senior research fellow at the Queensland Brain Institute and the Asia Pacific Center for Neuromodulation. The Parkinson's research team at QBI and St. Andrews is a large team of researchers, neurologists, neurosurgeons, psychiatrists, and neurophysiologists who have been studying and treating Parkinson's disease for the past 25 years. We are developing new tools to assess Parkinson's disease symptoms that will improve current therapies. And this innovation will also help us design future personalized quality quantitative treatments. My work on movement disorders involved the study of Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, and dystonia. Those diseases have in common that um, they have both motor symptoms and non-motor symptoms. They've been known for a long time, and there's actually no final cure for those diseases. In our work, we're trying to improve on the description of those diseases by quantifying the symptom as precisely as possible um, before and after symptomatic treatment. So we're using different types of tasks, as you can see here on the left, uh, a spirography task where you actually do a spiral, you draw a spiral with a pen on a graphics tablet and you can measure um, the pressure of the pen on the pad and the trajectory. And we also quantify and tremor, which, has, which are both uh, essential symptoms of uh, uh, Parkinson's disease and essential tremor. Before the treatment that was applied for um, those patients, you can see on the left that you do see a tremor um, during the spirography task and that you do have quite high amplitude tremors as measured by the experimenter on the lower left. And after the treatment of the symptoms, you can see on the right hand side that the um, tremor has disappeared in both tasks. So these tasks are very important in the, um, the work that we do because it gives us quantitative and personalized assessment of the symptoms for each of the patients we see at the specific time in the evolution of that disease. In another part of our work, uh, we study the effect of deep brain stimulation, which is a neurosurgical treatment of movement disorders. Uh, we do this work with Professor Peter Silburn and Associate Professor Terry Coyne at St. Andrews uh, War Memorial Hospital. In this treatment, an electrode is implanted in the brain 
and it's used to deliver the high frequency stimulation of the area that's targeted. The uh, stimulator is implanted in the, in the chest and is turned on and continuously um, stimulates parts of the brain that's been selected and is specific to the treatment of the symptom. Um, in this work, what we do is uh, provide information about the area of the brain where the electrode goes. Um, we do this by analyzing the signal recorded from that electrode, and that helps the clinical team deciding um, what is the best placement for this electrode. And we also use this type of recordings to understand a bit better um, the pathology. Uh, whether it's Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, or dystonia. So this is uh, a quick example here of the work that we do. You can see two types of cells here described. This is their activity. And on the bottom part, you can see um, the brain activity recorded globally. This is the top panel. And the bottom panel is the tremor um, that is measured with an accelerometer, the same type of accelerometer you can find in your, in your phone. So this work is very important in helping describing the disease a bit better, which is required to understand what is the mechanism behind the disease, and that is absolutely essential to have this knowledge so we can actually develop new cures. So just to summarize quickly, our work is to provide new evidence and understand the disease um, to help find a cure, whether it's Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, or dystonia. Um, we developed new tools and new techniques to quantify symptoms, and this is useful to improve treatment. Uh, we try and improve existing deep brain stimulation therapy by providing information to the clinical team about the location of the electrode before its final implantation, and also provide more information about um, the circuit that's underlying the pathology. Um, in that work, also um, support different clinical trials on obsessive compulsive disorder and anorexia um, that are uh, being conducted at the moment to treat those diseases with um, deep brain stimulation. Uh, and it's good to know that other uh, diseases have been um, tentatively treated by uh, deep brain stimulation like depression. Thanks for your attention. Well, thank you, Francois. That was very insightful. As you mentioned, DBS and the process. We're now going to show you a snippet of Ken, who received DBS to describe your experience and then pass straight over to Professor Peter Silburn. I was using a mobile phone and I found this when I held it up my ear. I was hitting myself in the head and there's something wrong. And that went on for a year or so. And I saw a neurologist and neurologist told me I had Parkinson's. That was 2001, and then uh, 2009, I had DBS. DBS was confronting, I was pretty desperate by that stage. Couldn't sign my name, couldn't use a computer. The DBS coined it all down. And uh, first two years after DBS, I didn't take any medication at all was under control. Professor Peter Silburn is a neurologist, Terry Coins, the, the surgeon. What can I say? They're both, both brilliant, if that's the word. 90% of it went away straight after the DBS, and the last 10% went off in the next six months. Oh, it is amazing. Firstly, having your life back. And I don't know. I don't know how people in past generations put up with it. No, I'm a lucky man. Hi, I'm Peter Silburn out here at the Queensland Brain Institute where I have a faculty position as a, as a professor and also, of course, working at St Andrews Memorial Hospital in the DBS team that we've been working now for 20 odd years or more on Parkinson's disease. And we'd like to get across the point that we certainly are expanding things with the Parkinson's and well beyond just tremor stiffness and slowness now. And we're having a clear impact 
on people's quality of life, which we've monitored now for over 25 years. And that's a kind of indication that it's a safe therapy and it's an expanding therapy because we now know no matter what you do, the class one evidence, which is the best evidence, it improves people's quality of life and really cuts down how much drug people require over the time they have their Parkinson. This has got an effect across the board, not just for the individual, but for those people that care for them and we're therefore improving people's lives, reducing the burden of care for our community. And we're really exploring here at the QBI things beyond just movement, things just beyond stiffness, slowness and tremor, which can have a major impact, as you know, but really how it affects non-motor things as well. And this is a very important area in Parkinson. So please come aboard. Uh, we really want to expand our knowledge and deliver, as we have delivered over the last 10, 20 years to our community that we work for. And delivering that to you is going to require everyone to work together. Well, well thank you, Francois and Peter. As you will see from this, we are expanding our view of Parkinson's disease and using quantitative measures now to start not just the diagnostic process, but also to, to make sure that people get the most optimal treatment. And Peter Silburn, of course, has been treating patients for many, many years, and he continues to develop and change his technique to provide better outcomes for patients. Currently, we also have trials for obsessive compulsive disorder and anorexia, and we really hope to expand this treatment out to a range of conditions outside movement disorder. I'd also like to thank this opportunity to thank Medtronic and St. Andrew's War Memorial Hospital and all our wonderful donors. The reason we can continue our work here and APCN and QBI is really because of donations from people like you, given the very uh, difficult funding conditions there are in Australia at the moment. Thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time. Bye.